Betty, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to cancel our appointment this afternoon after all. I've been called by Anne, and I'm going out now. What? She seems to have something she wants to discuss urgently with me. I can't ignore it, so I'm going. Wait a minute. Are you prioritizing Anne again? I made the date promise before her. But she says she has something she wants to discuss. I can't leave a friend in trouble. So let me ask you this. Is it okay to leave your fiancé alone? We were supposed to go ring shopping for our engagement today. We can do that anytime. No matter how I think about it, my friend Anne takes priority today. What did you say? Besides, you can go ring shopping alone, can't you? It's a hassle, so just go ring shopping by yourself, Betty. Are you kidding me? Going alone? It's an important engagement ring, you know? Aren't you going to choose it with me? The consolation with my friend is more important to me than the engagement ring. The only one who can help Anne with her consolation is me, who has been her friend for many years. I've been thinking about this for a while, but what's the distance between the two of you? I've confirmed it many times, but you're just friends, right? Hey, that question again, huh? Anne and I are just friends. There can be friendship between men and women, you know. I have male friends too, so I know how you feel. But even so, it's a bit... The distance between the two of you is strange. Prioritizing her over your lover is going too far. Because she's an important friend, I prioritize her over my lover. If we break up, that's the end of a romantic relationship, but friendship lasts a lifetime. Aren't we going to be together for life? That's why we're engaged and preparing for our wedding. Sheesh, you're making a big fuss out of it. Anyway, we're just friends. Stop casting weird suspicions on me. Well, I'm going now. Send me a photo if you find a nice ring. Sorry about today, Betty. I borrowed Alan even though it was a date. What, Anne? I wanted to apologize to you, so I asked Alan for your contact information. Alan said I didn't have to apologize, but still. That's a bit unexpected. I didn't know you had feelings of guilt, Anne. I'm really sorry for taking Alan from you since morning. On top of that, I ended up going along with the ring shopping. Now that I think about it, I was a nuisance, wasn't I? Yes, you were quite a nuisance. That's funny. Betty, you're quite harsh. But you're right. I wanted the two of us to choose the important engagement ring at our own pace. But there were times when I was helpful because I was there, right? Look, I know everything about Alan. I super know his taste and designs. Yes, that's right. Thank you for intruding so much with the details. But I'm the one who's going to be wearing the engagement ring. Because it's a day to find a ring to my liking, not Alan's. Oh, but... Don't you want to wear a ring that he likes if you can? That's what I think anyway. Well, I guess there's some truth to that. Right? That's why I was so happy today. I never thought Alan would give me a ring. I was so down this morning, but that made me feel better right away. That was the most confusing event of the day. Just when I thought I could finally part ways with you. This is a thank you for hanging out with me all day. To present a ring to you who followed us around on your own, I really don't understand. Hey, hey! Betty, you're so jealous. But it's strange no matter how you think about it, right? The price was the reason for postponing my engagement ring, right? Yet, he casually bought a ring for you that costs tens of thousands of dollars. You know Alan is a kind person, right? He's always been kind of flashy like that. No matter how many times I warn him, he won't stop because I'm an important friend. Ugh. What about the dress you wore today? Actually, I also got that from Alan. So you deliberately wore something you got from Alan? And getting a ring on top of that? It's almost like I'm the fiancé. 
Yes? Yikes! Scary! That was just a joke! It doesn't sound like a joke at all. Let me be clear. I don't like the distance between you two. But even if you say that, this is how we get along. We've known each other for about 10 years, so there's no gender boundary. So don't get the wrong idea. We're really just friends. Alan, where are you now? We had an appointment to visit the wedding venue today, didn't we? The meeting time has already passed. Oh no, I just woke up. What? Now? It's already afternoon. Have you been sleeping all this time? No, it's just that Anne wouldn't let me sleep. So I didn't get to sleep until the early morning and naturally overslept. Wait, what? You were with Anne until morning? Ugh, don't get the wrong idea. She came to my room out of the blue last night. She said she got some good alcohol at work and suggested we drink it together. So we kept drinking heavily, playing games until the wee hours, and I was at my limit. Wait a minute. That's what I would think. Could it be that Anne is still at your house? Yeah, she's sleeping soundly next to me. She said she couldn't sleep on the floor, so she got into my bed. What? Oh, by the way, I lent Anne your pajamas and other stuff to change into. She also finished off the lotion you had at home, so you'll need to replace it. Wait, are you kidding me? She finished my expensive lotion? She made a fuss about not being able to sleep without putting on lotion. You're both women, so I didn't think it would be a problem to lend her stuff. Even if we're both women, I absolutely hate having my stuff used. And it's even worse to have it all used up. You're a stingy woman. Anyway, that's the situation, so I won't be able to get there for a while. I'm waiting for Anne to wake up, so you go ahead and visit the venue by yourself. What? You should wake her up now. Why are you so relaxed waiting for her to wake up? I can't do such a pitiful thing. It's impossible for me to wake her up when she's sleeping so cutely. So, I'm waiting for her to wake up naturally. Once she's up, we'll join you, so go ahead and check out the venue. I can't handle this anymore. Alan, your relationship is strange after all. I can't go along with this anymore. Hey, hey, what's wrong all of a sudden? This is abnormal. It's not a male-female friendship or anything. To me, it looks like you're having an affair. Hey, don't start saying strange things. Anne and I are really just friends. We're aware that we're closer than other friends, but we're still friends. Anne and I are important figures who have crossed gender boundaries. I wanted to understand, but I can't anymore. I haven't even received my engagement ring yet. You told me the other day, didn't you? You said that when you get your next bonus because you don't have the money. So why are you buying Anne, a friend, a ring worth tens of thousands of dollars? A man who's stingy with his friends isn't a man. What's a guy who's stingy with his fiancée talking about? Hey, hey. What's gotten into you? Calm down a bit. How can I possibly calm down? This is how many times you've cancelled because of Anne. What's the point of getting angry about such a thing? We're engaged, so you should be able to overlook our friendship. That transcends gender. I find it funny that you're jealous of just a friend. Fine. Let's call off the marriage. What? I've had enough. I can't marry someone who dismisses his fiancé's complaints as funny. Let's break up and go back to square one with the marriage talk. What? But Betty... See you. Goodbye. Feel free to keep staring at Anne's sleeping face all you want. Hey, wait a minute. What's this about calling off the marriage all of a sudden? Don't you realize how absurd we are? There's no way we can get married in this state. But I told you, Anne is just a friend. Sure, I'm aware that we're closer than other friends, but we're seriously not in a romantic relationship. She doesn't even see me as a man. But you still give her clothes and a ring worth tens of thousands of dollars, don't you? And Anne wears the clothes she received from a man she doesn't see as a man. And when she received the ring, she seemed really happy. But it's normal among friends. You also give birthday presents to your friends, don't you? 
Yes, I do, but I rarely give gifts on non-special days, especially a gift on the scale of tens of thousands of dollars. More than that, from my boyfriend, Alan. I haven't even received a gift on a non-special day. Uh, no. In such a state, we're just friends. Don't joke around. I can't deal with you guys anymore. I'm breaking up with you no matter what you say. You're the one who's kidding. I'm just being friendly with a friend. Are you stupid to break up over that? Think about things rationally. You're the one who needs to think rationally. Stop spoiling Betty, you idiot son! What? Who's that all of a sudden? It's your mother, your idiot son! What on earth is going on here? What foolish thing are you doing? Uh, mom? Canceling a venue tour is outrageous, and to top it off, you prioritize your female friend. Sleeping in the same bed until morning and saying it's too pitiful to wake her up. The one who's messing around is you. Wait, wait, wait. Why is mom meddling with Betty's phone? I came along for today's venue tour because Betty invited me to go with her. What? You told me the other day that we're going to the tour this event. Actually, one of my friends works here and she might be able to get us a discount. When I told Betty about it, she invited me to come along. Ugh. I didn't hear anything about that. What's the point of having us in advance? Were you waking up some incomprehensible female friend? Did you arrive at the meeting place on time as you should have? Um, about that. Today's venue tour is cancelled for now. You stay there and keep staring at your worthless female friend's sleeping face. In the meantime, I'll go there. What? If you can't wake her up, I will. I'm sorry about yesterday, Betty. I've been lectured by my mom nonstop from then until now, and I've reflected a lot. I'm really sorry for all the unpleasant things I've caused. It's too late to reflect and apologize now. I can't trust you anymore, and I can't marry someone like that. But I'm not cheating. I haven't crossed any lines and we're not in a romantic relationship, so please rest assured. Even though you've been on a private hot spring trip with her? Even if you tell me to trust you in that situation? Wait, how did you find out about that? Your mother sent it to me. She said she extracted all the photos from the idiot's son's phone. When did she? Whether you cross the line or not, it doesn't matter. The fact that you're actively trying to be alone with a woman is too much for me. That's impossible. I'm going to claim damages for breaking off the engagement, so be prepared. What? Wait a minute. Even if I haven't cheated, that's just not right. But your mother said it was okay to claim. In our house, I, the mother, am the law. I'll definitely make my son pay, so claim the amount that you've been hurt. You're kidding me. to be kidding me! Why are you claiming compensation for breaking off the engagement from me too? I have nothing to do with your broken engagement! You're the main party involved. The one who caused the rift in our relationship is your existence. What? I don't know about that! Anyway, I'm not paying! I even tore up the bill! But your friend, Alan, said it was okay to claim. He said if he's going to be sued for damages, you should be too. What? He said he's not satisfied with just him paying. If you're friends, you're one in spirit, he said you'd probably pay too. What? Are you kidding me? He sold me out? But in reality, it was because of you that the engagement was broken off, wasn't it? I think you should take responsibility. It's only a few hundred thousand of dollars in claims. You can afford it, right? You've got to be kidding me! Who's going to pay? Is that so? Then let's have your parents shoulder it. What? I've got your parents' address from Alan, so I'll contact them right away. Excuse me. Wait, wait! You've got to be kidding me! Wait! Don't tell my parents! Why? If you're going to evade responsibility, it's common to ask the parents next, isn't it? So wait! 
It would be bad if this got out. Consider my situation a little. Your situation is? Is it because even your parents' approved fiancé will find out? Ugh. Actually, I've been suspecting you two of having an affair, so I took a leap and hired a private detective. A private detective? And it turns out you and Alan are really just friends. Your physical intimacy is obvious, but there was no evidence of a romantic relationship. I was even surprised to learn you had a fiancé. You've got to be kidding me! It's unbelievable that you checked without my permission! I think you should tell your fiancé everything and hear what he has to say. He may not like having friends of the opposite sex like me, and it's better to check any differences in your thoughts early on. Here's some advice from someone who's experienced a broken engagement. I... I don't need that! Oh, I see. How about this then? If your fiancé accepts your friendship with Alan, then I can specially withdraw the claim for compensation. Huh? But if your fiancé can't accept it, I will reclaim the compensation. If neither your fiancé nor I can accept it, please recognize that it's something regarded as outrageous by common societal standards. Then pay me the compensation on that basis. Stop it! Really, stop it! Stop it, please! Don't say anything to him! Well then, please pay promptly. I don't want to ruin your relationship too. If you pay what you owe, that's fine. I got it! I'll pay! It's okay if I pay, right? If I pay! I'll pay in full right away! Don't say anything to my fiancé! Alan and Anne paid me the compensation in full. I tried to give part of it to Alan's mother as a thank you. Use this money for yourself. Forget about my stupid son and find a good person. But she cheered me on instead saying, As for Alan and the others afterwards saying, Why don't we really start dating? When Alan confessed to Anne, I have a fiancé. Don't approach me ever again, she turned him down. Alan, surprised by the existence of a fiancé, lashed out at her. You can't be the only one who's happy and revealed everything to Anne's fiancé. Now they're also facing a crisis of breaking up. Iris, about today's lunchbox, what the heck is this? It's just leftovers from yesterday and the same stuff as this morning's breakfast. Why didn't you prepare anything for the lunchbox? I haven't seen such a poor lunchbox in a long time. You don't have to say it like that, you know? Managing the household budget is tough. We can't afford to be extravagant. Making a lunchbox doesn't cost that much, does it? Even frozen foods are tasty these days, so include some of those. They're about a dollar each, right? Even small expenses add up. I'm somehow managing the food expenses, including your lunch. If it's not enough, use your own pocket money. Why should I have to supplement our food expenses with my pocket money? I hate to say this, but Alan, your take-home pay is $1,500, and we're living on that, you know? You do realize our budget is pretty tight, right? No, I don't get it. Aren't you just bad with money? I have married colleagues who eat better than this. Isn't it strange that I'm eating such a lunch even though we work for the same company? Isn't that because their wives work part-time or they get help from their parents? I wonder if it's okay for me to start working now. Even if it's not full-time, I think I can handle a part-time job. Is it okay if I say something to your mom? That's why I want you to be on my side, Alan. I understand that your mom opposes me working, but we can't go on like this. Who's going to take care of my mom shopping and doctor's appointments? My mom lives alone. Iris, her daughter-in-law, should be able to handle that. Even if I get a part-time job, I can still do pick-up and drop-off. My mom tends to contact us suddenly. I want you to be ready to act immediately. Can't you ask her to wait a bit? Then I could work and we'd have more room in our budget. No way. My mom wouldn't listen to me. And if you start a part-time job, she might start contacting me instead. My mom believes a wife should be at home. Then can you save a little more, Alan? You're shopping with credit cards apart from your pocket money, aren't you? We're running a deficit every month because of those payments. But we're getting by, aren't we? That's because I'm dipping into my savings from when I was single. If we have savings, we'll be fine, right? What are you talking about? 
this money is mine. It doesn't matter whose money it is now that we're married, does it? It does matter. And I want to keep it for emergencies. Is it now the emergency? By emergency, I mean in case of illness or some urgent situation. If you're opposed to me working, at least try to save. I'm already doing my best to save. I've even cut down to less than a pack of cigarettes a day. So, you're not considering quitting? There's no way I can quit smoking. You could also put more effort into our lunches and regular meals, Iris. I'm the one who's working hard every day. Shouldn't you think more about taking care of me? Alan, what's this thousand dollar bill on the credit card? Uh, sorry. I ended up buying something I needed. You know your salary is a thousand five hundred dollars, right? What am I supposed to do with the remaining five hundred dollars? That's your job, Iris. Once the rent is paid, there's nothing left. How am I supposed to deal with that? What do we do? Can we use your savings? Please don't rely on my savings. Besides, there's not much left in my savings. I've told you over and over that our budget is tight. Why do you do this? You're so annoying. It's okay once in a while, right? I'm the one who's working. I want to work too if you'd let me. I'm tired of worrying about money every month. Alan, you have your pocket money, but I don't have anything each month. I haven't bought a single thing for myself since we got married. When we got married, we promised to support each other. My salary is going to increase a bit next year, so don't get all worked up. We're talking about now, not next year. Seriously, stop it. You're going to pay for this credit card bill. What? You know I can't afford it. Then why did you use it? Did you use it because I told you about my savings from when I was single? It's not exactly that, but... Stop calling me while I'm at work. It's your fault, isn't it? Me, huh? It's you who can't manage money, isn't it? No matter how you look at it, our finances aren't balanced. I don't want to talk about money anymore. Yes, that's it. End of story. Wait, it's not over yet. When you get home, we'll talk it through again, alright? Iris, if we argue about this at home, I'll lose my temper, got it? Why does it always end up like this? Our meals are so modest every day because you can't handle money, right? I'm working hard, yet all you do is complain. You're the one not doing anything. Don't you dare talk to me about money again. It's all because you spend too much, isn't it? What else do you want me to do? That's your job to think about it. There are even people on the internet and TV who live on a hundred dollars, you know? You're lacking creativity, that's all. Don't just blindly accept that. I'm saying most of it is gone, just paying rent. Ugh, you're so annoying. Enough already, I'm not coming home tonight. Huh? Where are you going? To my mother-in-law's place? Enough already. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Alan, I went to the bank earlier. There was no paycheck deposited. You're not late on your paycheck, are you? Uh, about that. I already withdrew it. What? Why? Were you planning to hand it to me later? No, not that. I stopped putting money in for living expenses for a while. What? What do you mean? So, about our monthly living expenses, I'm not going to give you any for a while starting this month. Huh? What are you saying? How am I supposed to live without money? Can't you manage with your savings? You're seriously saying that? I told you my savings are running low, didn't I? But you still have some, right? Even last time's credit card bill somehow worked out. You keep saving, save, save when you have money. I'll be in trouble with the paycheck. Are you doing this because we had a fight? You're cheeky for a parasite. You should be more grateful to me. You've been thinking of me as a parasite? That's right. You're jobless and just eating, right? Isn't the word parasite a perfect fit? <laughs> I've been doing house chores and going to your mother-in-law's house. I think I'm doing quite a few things. It's not like I'm not doing anything. So, is that making any money? 
All you do is things that don't earn a dime, yet you act so high and mighty. I've never acted high and mighty, have I? You were lecturing me. You can't live without me. Don't ever tell me to save money again. It's crazy to corner me financially. It's your fault for not understanding my position. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to kneel and apologize when you get home? I've had enough. What do you mean by enough? I'm sorry. Oh, you're apologizing. Then promise me you'll never go against me again. I'm looking forward to coming home today. Depending on your attitude, I'll think about whether to give you the paycheck. <laughs> hey, Iris. Why aren't you home? You didn't even prepare dinner. Did my mother-in-law call you over or something? No, not that. I left the house. Huh? Weren't you supposed to apologize? I've done everything I can. You ran away from home because you can't get living expenses from me. You should just apologize quickly instead of being stubborn. I'm the one earning money, so you're the one who'll suffer, huh? <laughs> I wonder how long this will last, huh? <laughs> how will the parasite live, huh? <laughs> I won't be in trouble, but you're going to have a rough time. You should be worried about yourself. What are you talking about? You're the one who'll be in trouble, right? Why am I having trouble? You can't survive without my paycheck, and you're homeless, right? Your parents are already dead. You don't even have a place to go back to. If that's the case, don't worry. I've already found a job and a place to live. What? I've been job hunting, so it was perfect. Job hunting? Hey, it's forbidden to work in this house. I know. I was planning to get a divorce, so I left. Divorce? Why? Are you serious? Why would I lie about something like this? You kept telling me to save money every month because we're running a deficit, but you don't cooperate at all. If you knew I had savings, you'd spend even more. To top it all off, you've been economically sanctioning me because I'm cheeky. Do you think I can live with someone like that? What are you saying? Iris, just come home for now. At a later date, I'll visit the house with a lawyer. Why is a lawyer coming? I just want to talk to you. I'm bringing a lawyer because I don't think we can have a decent conversation, just the two of us. When we get a divorce, there's also the matter of property division. Well, we don't have any joint property, so it'll be about appliances and the car. Don't rush things. I want to discuss a divorce first. What's there to discuss now? That is... It's about the future, so to speak. If Iris was that worried, I thought I would compromise a little. Ah, I don't need that, huh? I'm getting a divorce because I'm tired of living with you, alright? Finding a middle ground by discussing things with each other. It's not on that level anymore. But it's harsh to suddenly talk about divorce. Who's the harsh one? You only have a $1,500 income in each month, but you spend more than that, right? Even when I try to save, you just complain. All my efforts feel wasted. Other colleagues of ours are able to live decently. I don't want to be the only one living like I'm poor. That's why I've asked to be allowed to work, right? Yet, because my mother-in-law opposes it, you won't even let me get a part-time job. Honestly, you brought this on yourself. Understood. Then go ahead and get a part-time job. I said it's too late. Then, what are we supposed to do about mother? I'm working, I can't take care of her. I don't know, I'll resign as your wife. Marriage was really hard up until now. Every day, like clockwork, mother would call bossing me around. Even on weekdays, she would call me at work asking where I should take her. Wouldn't it just go back to that lifestyle? After marriage, you dumped everything on me without doing a thing. Ah, is it because you're reluctant to divorce because you don't want to be used by your mother again? No, I've never even thought about divorce. You probably thought I couldn't get a divorce because I don't have parents to go back to, right? That's why you could treat me so poorly, right? No, it's not like that. Didn't you just say that earlier? There's nowhere to go, right? Sorry. Even if you apologize, I won't forgive you anymore. But you apologized to me during the day, right? You said sorry, right? 
Didn't you feel at least a little bit guilty? I can't take care of you anymore, I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Iris, do you really want a divorce? Because of all the things that have happened? Plus, Alan, you can do as you please without me, right? No more nagging lectures from me, right? No, I'm bad at managing money. See? You just wanted to dump all the troublesome things onto me, right? I don't want to be with a husband who doesn't value me. From now on, I will value you. I'll save money and I won't side with my mother but protect you, Iris. That's what I wanted during our marriage. But I'm glad I got to know your true colors early on. I had some good memories during our courtship and early marriage, so it was hard to decide on a divorce. But thanks to this, I've made up my mind. Iris, I'm sorry. I can't live alone. Please, come back. Please. What you're worried about is not having me around to do everything for you, right? No. I want Iris back because I love you, because I care about you. You love me. Just words of love are annoying. If you really felt that way, you would have shown it in your actions. And you wouldn't have pushed me to the brink economically. I'm sorry. Like I said, it's too late to apologize now. Oh, I haven't paid this month's rent yet. And I haven't deposited the money for the credit card payment. Uh, I only have $800 left from this month's salary. I don't know, you're the one who spent it. Ah, that's right. Why don't you try the ingenuity you always talk about? You can live on $100 a month, right? You should try your best. He kept reaching out, insisting he didn't want a divorce. But my feelings weren't about to change. When I told him I was ready to seek mediation, if he wouldn't agree to divorce, he begrudgingly signed the divorce papers. There were no savings for us to divide, but I managed to get some of the appliances and the car we bought when we were newlyweds. Afterwards, my ex-husband gave up on renting his own place and moved back to his mother's house, his childhood home. Since then, he's been swamped with looks after his mother and housework, leaving no time for himself. Leading a busy life, or so I hear. To be blunt, his mother is a toxic parent, a person who seems to consider her son, my ex-husband, as her own property. As a result, when he moved back home, his mother took all his earnings, and he returned to the poverty-stricken life he once led. Before we got married, I felt sorry for him and wanted to support him, but now his words and actions have left me with no such feelings. After that, I got a job with housing included, and I've been living a busy but fulfilling life. Since it's company housing, I can save more than if I lived alone, and the working environment is also good. It feels like I've suddenly arrived in heaven after a hellish marriage. Our marriage lasted less than two years, but life without the freedom to change, even a single favorite snack or drink was really tough. For a while, I planned to spoil myself, indulge in some luxuries now and then, and heal myself with the money I earn. For now, I'm not interested in dating, but if I ever get the chance, I'd like to choose someone who can manage money well. Money isn't everything, but the way you use it can change your life. To that end, I want to learn more about financial literacy and start building a solid foundation for my life once again.